welcome to this video about referencing. This video is based on a session we deliver for first year medical students, so while a lot of the examples might not match your area of study or research, the principles will be much the same. As with all things, make sure you've double checked your references before submitting your work, and please use this video as a guide rather than an inflexible rule book on how to reference. So first off, what is referencing? Well, it's an example of good and ethical academic practice. Developing your scientific voice includes showing where your ideas came from. It also gives you an opportunity to give credit to your sources and demonstrates the depth of your reading and research. It also allows you to signpost your reader to other potentially interesting sources and connected to the top point about ethical academic practice, it helps you avoid plagiarism. So that nasty word plagiarism, what actually counts as plagiarism in this context? So quoting verbatim without acknowledgement, paraphrasing without acknowledgement, using ideas from someone else without acknowledgement, I think you can probably spot a pattern forming here, uh, cutting and pasting from the internet, we would never do that but it can happen, submitting someone else's work, collusion, so working with someone else on a piece of work that should be an individual effort. Lots of different examples there. And as I said, there is a pattern forming. So if in doubt, reference it, acknowledge it, say where it came from. There are many different sources of information for your work that you could be referencing. So books, journal articles, lecture handouts and slides, supervisor recommendations, library recommendations, or just even a quick Google search on your topic. All of these things will need to be referenced if you use them or if they influence your thinking. So now I've told you the, the, the why, let's move on to the how. How do you actually reference? Now, as I said, today's examples are medically themed but are applicable to all situations. The examples we're using will use Harvard referencing style other ones are available. It's very similar to uh, what's called APA, which is an American Psychological Association style, and both are used extensively across the biological sciences. Harvard and APA um, is an author date method. So an important point, it doesn't have footnotes. If you start using footnotes and you're using Harvard, you're doing it wrong. Um, you need to have your reference in the body of your text with the author name followed by the date of publication and then you include a full reference at the end of your essay or dissertation in a reference list. Typically that reference list does not count towards your word limit so don't worry if it's really long you should be fine. Be careful of including names when using confidential information and you cite them right to help build your citations or you can use a reference manager. We're going to talk through some of these points in more detail as we go. A thing to keep in mind, references may seem like a lot of work, and they are when done properly, but they are also incredibly valuable. They are like a treasure map. It helps your reader find their way to the treasure or what you've read and all that hard work that you've done. So let's have a quick look at the anatomy of a reference using a book. So going from left to right, you have the name of the author, sometimes multiple authors, the year of publication, the title of the book, in Harvard it's in italics, and then the place of publication and publisher name. This is a very straightforward, full reference. So this particular example is the book that hopefully you can see on your screen. Towards the Emancipation of Patients by Charlotte Williamson. So single author, fairly straightforward. So as you can see here, the reference makes sense in the context of what you're writing. So you can refer to an author just in the flow of the text and put the date in brackets with their name just to make it clear exactly which work you're referring to. Or you can just put it in brackets in the second example uh, with their name and date just as a whole thing. So you can be flexible with how you use references just as long as they make sense in the context you are referring to a thing, is it clear to your reader what that thing is and where they can then go and look that up themselves. 
and then at the end of your piece of work you would put the full reference to Williamson's work at the end with all the information that somebody needs to find that work or to check which version of the work you've referenced. Sometimes you may need to reference a book with two or three authors. An example here, again we have the in-text example of Warner McAndrew suggests that dot dot dot. Um, we have a page number there as well because you have referred to a specific thing that they've suggested, it's almost a quote. You can actually help people find exactly what you're referring to by including the page number as well if you're talking about specific ideas rather than talking about a summary of broad ideas. So you would use that page number to really help someone fine tune down, really hone down into where that particular idea is in the book. Or you can be more broad and just say enriching this education, Warner McAndrew 2014 dot dot dot. Depends on the context of what you're writing. And then again, you have the full reference at the end of your work, all the information there, and also what um, series the book is in. Okay, so that's referencing a book with two or three authors. Referencing a book with four or more authors, you can have many. Um, this, within Harvard specifically, is when you start seeing et al, which means and others. So... You don't have to put multiple authors in your in-text citations. If there are multiple authors, you start with the leading one and say et al, and then the date, the page numbers, however you're using it within the context. So we've got some worked examples here. And then the full reference list. For this particular example, we have et al, Petit v et al, 2020, the Anthropolog Anthropological Demography of Health. So within Harvard, within the example we've used, because it has four or more authors, you don't have to put them all in, but sometimes you are required to list all names. So do check the reference style that you're using and do check whether you want to include all those names or not. Four names is not particularly arduous, but an example we often use is if you're citing any papers written by the guys at CERN, um, yeah, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of co-authors on some of those papers and you're not going to be writing those all out. So use your judgment within the context of what you're doing and as long as it's clear as to what it is you're referencing, you should be okay. So referencing a book with four or more authors. Referencing an e-book. So when I've been talking about books, I mean you have an actual book in your hand and you can touch the paper and it's actually physical and three-dimensional in front of you. But you may be using electronic books as well. Very similar approach to a physical book, but you may also want to include its DOI, which is Digital Object Identifier, which is a unique web address that you actually can access the resource at. And also you will need to include when you accessed it. This is particularly important for digital content because things can change, things can be edited. You looked at something in 2022, in this example, and it said what it said. And then it's been edited and someone else has gone back and said, well, hang on a second, that's not what that says anymore. What happened there? And you can see actually the change or something was edited after the date that you looked at it. So it backs you up and it makes you be able to justify that, no, you weren't misreading it, you weren't um, fibbing about it. It has actually just been updated since you looked at it which happens. Also important for when web pages go down and things just cease to exist on the internet. It existed when you read it so you can justify yourself by giving it a timestamp. Do be careful with ebooks. Sometimes they don't always have page numbers. Sometimes their page numbers are a bit weird. Do the best that you can with the information that you have and if you're still struggling just reach out to your local librarian and we'll have a look at it for you and see if we can help. Okay that's ebooks. Referencing a journal article is very similar to referencing a book when you're talking about it in the context of your writing, your in-text citation, you've got the author, you've got the date. Again, the context of how you're describing it, how you're referring to it will influence how you write this out. And then you have your full citation for your reference list at the end. So we have the journal article title in single quotations in Harvard style, the journal title in italics, issue, volume numbers, page numbers, 
where it's available from. Again, you've got that DOI. A lot of the time, it'll be very straightforward as to where you can get that from. It, you, if you can see on your screen, the DOI is actually listed underneath the um, title of the article on the screen grab that I've shared. And then again, when you accessed it. So include all the information that you possibly can within the format that Harvard asks for. I will tell you in a moment about how you can find out what all this information is, because at this point, you're probably thinking, how am I going to remember any of this? It's OK. Bear with me. I have answers. So just a quick side note on referencing anything that's been published. So make sure that you've actually read what you're citing. It sounds quite quite obvious, but actually do make sure that you're reading things that you're citing, because it may be that you're reading someone else's summary of it and they've not quite got it right, or you've skimmed something really quickly and you've just made a conclusion from the abstract um, and actually there is something a little bit more meaty and a bit more detailed in the main body of the text. So yeah, make sure you've actually read what you're citing and don't just rely on the abstract to get a good full picture about what this particular researcher is talking about. If you can't access something, search for it in iDiscover. So you can search for full journal articles or journal titles just to get the full text. And if you still can't access something you want, just ask your librarian for help. My biggest takeaway for this is if you haven't read it, as I said, you might be misrepresenting your understanding of it as well as perhaps someone else's understanding of it. So just make sure you've actually read what you're citing. Referencing lecture handouts, you should be referencing your lecture handouts. These are written pieces of work. Even if they're hidden on somewhere like Moodle, they are still pieces of work um, that a lecturer has created, and so they deserve the credit just as much as anyone else. So you can have the tutor's notes, blah, 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 whatever, however, whatever makes sense for you in the context. You still get that author and date combination as your in-text citation. And then your full reference list. Sometimes you'll have to make this up a little bit because unpublished materials such as lecture handouts can sometimes be a bit tricky to kind of make sense of but as long as you follow the Harvard rules you can make it work or the rules of whatever referencing style you're working with so here we've got J Smith 2022 introduction to GMC's ethical guidance and standards and then it's in a particular course so this paper is the social and ethical context of health and illness that's the paper it's from the University of Cambridge available at and then there's just a link to Moodle. Um, in this instance, you're probably not expecting someone to actually be able to go and access that if they're not already um, an enrolled student or a member of staff, but you've still got the link as to where you got that from originally. And then again, when you accessed it. Referencing websites. Ref websites can be a bit tricky to reference because not every website includes a clear author, a clear date when it was last updated. It can be a bit tricky. So again, this is very much using your judgment a lot of the time and just trying to have as much information in there as you can. If you don't have a date, there is a way within Harvard just to say no date, which is n dot d dot. But if you do have a date, try to include it if you can. So again, we've got an example from healthtalk.org about rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the author is Health Talk, which is the organisation. It's fine to put that in when it was written. Conveniently, it does say 2019. Um, the article title and then where it's available and again, when you accessed it. So websites are a bit knotty. They may not always be straightforward, but it is possible to reference them with a bit of common sense. Referencing confidential discussions this may or may not apply to you, but if you're doing anything medical, if you're doing psychology, if you're doing anything with anonymised information, sometimes you do need to anonymise material for ethical reasons. So this is an example of if you had been doing a piece of work with an, a company um, who wishes to keep information confidential, either because it's patients and you know medical information, but it could also be... Um, because you're working with something there's a bit of corporate sensitivity. I've also been asked questions about somebody citing um, research that is uh, of national security and only certain people can look at it. So there are many different reasons as to why um, you need to anonymise things. And so in this example, um, a hospital that someone had a placement in has just been reduced to Placement Hospital 2022. And that's the author. That's the name of the thing. 
um, and then you've tried to put as much information in there as possible. So, for example, if this was Adam Brooks, which is a local hospital to Cambridge, um, it would be Adam Brooks Hospital's examination criteria for patients with learning disabilities, but because we want to anonymise it, we just have placement hospital in square brackets, um, and then that it's unpublished. Also, if you have anything unpublished, say that it's unpublished. So yeah, so this is one of definitely, this took me a little while to work out when I was using this as an example. So you will get ones that you're looking at them and thinking, this is really weird. I don't know how to do this. Um, and sometimes some of the, the tools that I'm going to recommend in a moment will help you work through it. Or sometimes you can just email a librarian, a member of my team and just say, look, I've got a really weird thing. How do I reference it? I helped someone reference Google Maps quite recently and it took us a while to figure it out, but we did. We figured it out together and we're there to help you figure out weird and wonderful things too. So, speaking of weird and wonderful things, you can also reference YouTube videos, news reports in online websites, TikTok videos, Twitter posts or X posts, as they are probably now called by the time you see this video, blog posts, lots of different kind of weird different media that isn't a book or a journal article, something more formal, but you may need to reference because it's talking about your work in some way. Use a resource called Cite Them Write for guidance. This is a website that has lots of really good breakdowns of different resources, different weird things, unpublished things, published things, things online, things in paper, um, and it will give you a breakdown of the sorts of things you should be referencing. So the dates, the how you put the name in, um, what you do if you don't have all the information um, and it will help guide you through that process and give you blank examples but also give you worked examples of what it might look like depending on what it is. So I use that to just double check some of these examples for this video and it's absolutely invaluable. So you can access that through the A to Z databases libguide for Cambridge. If you're not sure where to find that just google A to Z databases libguide or find a quick link to it through the iDiscover search catalogue. But something you might also be thinking is, how the heck am I supposed to remember all of this? You've just talked through a load of stuff like dates, authors, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot. There's a lot to remember. How do I keep this all in my head? Well, the simple answer is you don't. You don't need to. So consider investing in a reference manager like Zotero. Zotero is one that we recommend quite a lot. Um, what you do is you install it and then it embeds a nice little browser plugin um, in a browser of your choice. You click on that browser plugin whenever you're looking at something digital um, and it will save all of the information where available to help you then construct your references. So it will look at what you're looking at, it will pull in the title, the author, the date, all those sorts of things and then it provides you with a cloud library behind the scenes to help you back things up. All of these references are editable, so if you're looking at a website that doesn't have a date, that is missing an author, something like that, you can always add that information in as well. Um, you can use it to also save physical items, so if you pop into iDiscover and look up that physical book that you have in your hand right in this moment, you can probably find a record for it there and save it from there, or just save it from somewhere like Amazon. Not necessarily condoning buying from Amazon, but you can use their metadata because it's quite good to save things into your Zotero library. Once you've got information in there, you can then output all of those saved references into a Word document or other word processor of your choice in over 10,000 different styles. So Harvard's in there, APA's in there, but also the really weird niche kind of ones are in there as well. I know some people um, in Cambridge Article Sciences use the referencing style cell. I've heard a lot of part two students asking me questions for how to use cell. Um, and basically the upshot is you don't need to remember where that full stop goes, whether something needs to be in italics or not, because Zotero will remember that for you. Obviously, always double check that it's outputted it in the format that you want and that you're expecting. Um, you know, Don't rely on, on machines to do everything for you. Do double check it. But it does save a lot of brain work, it does almost all the work for you, and it's compatible across multiple operating systems, and we do offer training sessions on how to get started with Zotero if you want them. So yeah, lots of support out there to help you 
get started with the reference manager. Other reference manager products do exist. So just to sum up, remember to reference everything that you use for your work. Capture all the information you need to create a really good reference. This can be through keeping really good notes or investing in a reference manager and saving as you go. If nothing else, just be consistent with your referencing or follow a style consistently like Harvard. Include references in the text at key points that make sense in the context of your work. This is only something you can decide because you know what you want to say. Include everything you reference in your full list at the end. And my biggest, biggest piece of advice is if in doubt, reference it. If you have any questions, contact us at sbslibraries at lib.cam.ac.uk. That'll get all of the Biological Sciences Libraries team all in one go. We have a website. Of course, we have a website, bio.lib.cam.ac.uk. Um, we have more detailed training on referencing, Zotero and other things, which can also be found on our website. Or just ask us for a chat about your work. We'll be happy to sit down with you and kind of work through those knotty references. Okay, have fun.